Omar Algabra is the Minister of Transport. He's in Mississauga, Ontario. All right, Minister, I, I want to start with the rebate if I can. You've increased the cost so that more vehicles qualify for the rebate, but the rebate remains the same at a maximum of $5,000. Why not raise both? Wouldn't a bigger rebate lead to more demand? Uh, first of all, David, our, our rebate, our federal rebate has been implemented since 2019. Um, some provinces also have provincial rebates. So a total, some of the rebates in some provinces total up to $13,000. And in fact, we're seeing in many of those provinces have uh, a greater uptake. Uh, so it's really important to, um, to, to support Canadians who are considering buying uh, an electric or a zero emission vehicle. Today's announcement is to expand the categories of vehicle. Yes, we're keeping the $5,000, um, but we're also expanding the category. So we're making more vehicles more affordable. So now we have upward of at least, I think, 125 vehicles that now qualify for this incentive. Right, but, but did you give any consideration to upping the 5000 I know there are some provinces that have quite generous incentives, but it's not an across-the-board thing in Canada. And if the goal here is to save the planet, did you look at it? We did. We uh, look, David. We did look at it, and and I think we want it as you as you know. At the end of the day, we don't have an in, in, uh, you know an infinite uh, number of dollars or resources that are available, and we wanted to get the most value out of the dollars available for this budget. Uh, and we thought the best combination is to expand, keep uh, the five thousand as is, but expand the number of vehicles. And given the the differentials between zero emission vehicles and internal combustion engine vehicles, we thought that the five thousand and the number of categories will be the best, most value added uh, for passengers uh, for uh, for consumers. Right, but I want to look at some of the numbers because I know one of the changes in the budget was adding uh, trucks, for example, medium-duty trucks and vans to this. The sticker price is still pretty enormous. Like I was looking at an F-150, a gas-powered F-150 base model is about thirty-six, thirty-seven thousand dollars. The electric F-150 starts at sixty-eight thousand dollars. I know gas prices come out of the equation. But just getting over the hump with the down payment and getting down to a reasonable, is $5,000 going to do it there for someone who wants to go to an electric F-150 or other kind of pickup model? Uh, look, by the way, the F-150 is currently under review. It may qualify uh, for this program. Uh, but you're right. Now, with this new announcement today, we have more categories, more trucks, more SUVs that are eligible for the refund. They're going to be more affordable than they were uh, now. And uh, by Monday, they're going to be more affordable. Um, so we think the the margin, by the way, the dif price differentials between zero emission vehicles and internal combustion uh, uh, vehicles is shrinking. It keeps shrinking. We think the 5,000 is going to make it more affordable and we're putting a cap. So we want to make sure that it's vehicles that are middle class Canadians are interested in uh, to ensure that we make those vehicles affordable for middle class Canadians. Luxury vehicles uh, they do not have that incentive. Uh, so we're, we're, we're tried, given the resources that we have, we tried to find the sweetest spot in offering the most value for, uh, uh, for Canadians who are looking to buy their cars. I'm confident, yes, a lot of Canadians are considering buying cars. One of the challenges they have before them is even supply. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're excited about working with the manufacturers on enhancing supplies. More cars are coming. I, I, I was speaking with automakers. Uh, that we're coming to the market. So we're, we think we're addressing both the supply and the demand aspect of, uh, of purchasing zero emission vehicles. Oh, and certainly we've seen a, a bunch of announcements, particularly here in Ontario with your colleague, Minister Champagne and, and Premier Doug Ford and others. But you know, you know, the goal here is to get to 100% of new vehicle sales being electric or zero emission by 2035. We're currently at about 5%. And, and, and we've heard from people like the Canadian Vehicle Manufacturers Association say, look, with inflation being the way it is, and that's hitting vehicle costs, and driving them up. Brian Kingston says the subsidy levels right now just aren't going to be high enough for you to hit your targets. So, I mean, would you look at indexing the $5,000, the CPI or something like that, or is this a static number going forward? Um, David, I know, and I've been uh, speaking with the automakers uh, uh, um, uh, for, for a while, and of course, they were interested in seeing a higher incentive. It makes sense, I guess, for them from their perspective. Uh, I do, believe me, I do want to uh, find uh, more Canadians buying more of these vehicles. And we really tried, as I said, 
to maximize the dollars available to help the biggest number of Canadians who are looking to buy cars. Having said all of that, um, uh, you know, some provinces have a higher uptake of zero emission vehicles because of the provincial incentives that they have. So I, I, I you know, we call on the provincial, our provincial partners, especially those provinces who don't have an incentive to either reintroduce or introduce an incentive as well. I think the combination of our federal and provincial incentives will go a long way. Uh, our government is putting up significant investments in building charging stations, subsidizing these refueling stations. Uh, we, we're helping uh, manufacturing of batteries and vehicles. We think the combination of all uh, of this plan will help make these vehicles more affordable, will help Canadians buy them, and will help manufacturers make more of them. Right, and the requirement to have a certain share on the lots increasing over time will increase supply and should lower the price point over time, assuming this works. But look, cost is only one challenge uh, with this transition. We've talked a lot about charging stations, for example, and the need to do that. But what about the electricity grid itself? I mean, if suddenly in a typical neighborhood, can it handle the load if every car on that street suddenly has the plug in to charge up instead of uh, going to the pump uh, as it is right now? Um, so I can assure you that utilities across Canada is right now preparing for the increased demand on their grid, uh, particularly as more people buying electric vehicles. Uh, I know there are a lot of smart people uh, looking at the existing capacity of the grid, looking at what additional capacity is needed. The budget, our budget of this year's budget, offered $250 million to work with provinces on enhancing the electric grids that connects provinces, that connects, that builds more, uh, more capacity in the grid. So I can assure you that there are a lot of people uh, looking into the existing situation and preparing for what we expect the increased demand will be. Okay, I, I, while I've got you, I've got one more thing I want to raise with you. We saw uh, the easing of border restrictions to, uh, announcement today that on April 25th, some of the border restrictions are going to be relaxed. What about internally? Where are you on lifting the domestic travel vaccine requirements or even the vaccine mandate uh, for federal workers? Is that something that we will or could see in the near future? David, you asked me my personal opinion, and I've been saying this all along, is that these measures are done to protect the health and safety of passengers and those who work in the industry, but also these measures are temporary given the COVID situation. And what we've done all along is we con we are constantly assessing and reassessing the measures that we've had, and, and we've been able to change them and adjust them accordingly. So uh, do I think that these measures will change in the future? Yes, I do. Uh, can I tell you when that's gonna happen? No, but I can assure you that these measures are constantly being reassessed with our experts, with my colleagues at cabinet at the cabinet table. And stay tuned whenever we're ready to make additional announcements. But you've seen us change and modify and ease our measures as we uh, get advice to do so. So uh, stay tuned for uh, potential future measures. Okay, Minister Algabra, thanks for your time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.